So uh, thank you all for coming. Today I am be uh, talking about Mark Mal, an automated framework for Mark malware hunting and farm from Svilabs. So the reason why we implemented Mark Mal, uh, we see that Marco's market share is increasing. It made up about 9% in total operating system share. And there's an increasing number of new Mark malware. It has grown 700% in 2016 and more than 700,000 instances in 2017. Also increasing complexity of Mark threats. We already heard on the news that there are more and more advanced persistent threats, evasive malware on Mac, and even ransomware on Mac. And there's a lot of automated solution done for malware hunting on Windows or Linux and even Android, but nobody ever talks about Mac. And common techniques to analyze malware using sandbox technology are not well developed on Mac OS. And therefore, it motivates us to develop a modern malware analysis framework on Mac. And our solution is to automate as much as the interactive analysis as possible and uh, produce analysis reports describing exactly what it does when it runs and specifically allow us to perform a detailed analysis without any human interaction. So uh, common malware analysis technique for Mac are static analysis and dynamic analysis. However, signature-based approaches have shortcomings given the quality and quantity of today's malware. And hybrid analysis are widely accepted solution to cope with the issue. And we evaluated a number of Mark malware analysis solutions, such as Cuckoo Sandbox, Virus Toto Apple Sandbox, FireEye Mac Monero. And eventually, we chose Cuckoo Sandbox, where Cuckoo Sandbox is an open source software for automating analysis of suspicious files, and it is modular components to monitor the behavior of malicious process while running in an isolated environment. So the very first thing is static analysis. We implemented that feature by gathering feature information from module binary, just yes, similar to other binary malware analysis platform. So we gather the header file, code, data segments, shared libraries, load commands, and symbol table. For each of the segment in March binary, we extract information about the section, and then we calculate the segment entropy to detect a pack or encrypted access. And another information collected and potentially significant for analysis is the code signing certificate, which can lead a malware to an indicator of compromise. And it would be very helpful for analysts to hunt other samples sharing the same certificate and from malware author's point of view, code signing is very important for them because like, it's nearly impossible for ordinary victims to execute unsigned binaries because of the gatekeeper uh, from Mac OS Sierra. And a large number of software on Mac mostly take the form of BSD style where the packages store within an OS X specific disk image, .img or .dmg and or uh, mark application files .app. And the package contains other resources, including significant information, for example, the property list, the plist. And that plist are the XML-based files used to store the application configuration. And we extract and store these results that can provide a very good starting point for investigating suspicious files. About the dynamic analysis, here is an overview design of our Mac ML dynamic analysis. And it can be divided into two main parts, the host analysis machine and the monitor machine. On the right side of the screen, this is the analysis machine which builds upon the Cuckoo Sandbox, the Cuckoo front end. And it has a, a web panel to interact with analysts and it stores the reports, the storage, it also supports Elasticsearch as well as Yara and Vice Total Query. And there's an analyzer uh, in the responsible for sample distribution. And it does behavior analysis and behavior signature. And it can send the samples to multi multiple monitor machine. And in the monitor machine in the left side, 
uh, the malware basically running on the user space. And in the user space, there's an analysis agent to receive samples from the analysis machine, and it also communicate with the kernel space. On the kernel space, which uh, where we um, implement our kernel space monitor, and it can monitor the system calls, can monitor process execution, file operation, or network activities. And Cuckoo supports many virtualization miniature, and we successfully created a virtualized Mac instances on VMware, on VirtualBox, and on QMU, so that the analysis machine can be on whatever operating system you want, but the virtualized machine must be running on Mac OS. And by the way, uh, any sample ties are supported as long as there are software running on the monitor machine supported. The reason why I mentioned about this because ISO method for debugging and monitoring processes is uh, basically you start a program and then immediately you instrument that program. But it sometimes fails because of the Mac sandbox policy. And in our solution, the sample is executed by the open application. There's a, a default file handler on Mac. And its mechanism is similar to how user open a file by double click on it. And then the program will decide which kind of application to open. And it supports almost any file types. Therefore, samples could be Office document, can be PDF document, or uh, Apple script. But the trouble for this double click is that open spawns a new process and it goes to the Mac Cisco interface. Mark in here is the mandatory access control framework. And if you try to hook it in the user space, then normally it will fail because uh, it's supposed to be checked by the Mac sandbox and pro probably it will be rejected. But we still need the process tray anyway in order to do the behavior tracing. Fortunately, with the help of hooking system calls in the kernel space, and that sandbox mechanism doesn't affect our solution, and then Macamar framework can trace process spawn to the open, to launch D, to XPC process services properly, while DTrace and Mac Cuckoo sandbox easily fail. And other archives like the Apple disk image, uh, we firstly attach it via HDI util, and then we execute all the application inside the attach volumes. For cross-platform malware variants, using scripting application like Java, like Perl, or Python, then we use their own interpreter to monitor their behavior. And about um, our kernel spy monitor, it is motivated by previous research on X Black Cat by Pedro Vilaca for kernel system code table discovery and Gray Fox by Vincent van Michem. And f uh, firstly, Mark came out, uh, solved the KAS error, and then it deactivates the kernel memory protection. And the monitoring happened by hooking into a set of system calls for extracting the behavior information. And that set of, of uh, system code can be customized by the analyst. And that module will intercept the system calls and collect corresponding arguments. And therefore, it is possible to collect drop files while running the binaries. And by tracing the process tree and the XPC service messages, it helps us to find the shell commands, the species network activity, and file access behavior. For example, a malware tries to open a network port. And if no communication is published, right? There won't be anything captured by the network sniffer. But using our solution, obviously, we can see that kind of listening port activity uh, while we're looking inside the network system call log. And also, MarkML is able to detect evasive techniques and mitigate them. Common anti debug techniques are calling the P trace or calling the system control system calls to detect the debugging flags. And this kind of tricks won't influence our kernel monitor components like MacML. However, it will intercept and uh, report these activities for later investigation. And for anti sandbox mi mitigation, it not only hook but also patch inside the kernel memory on the fly 
to manipulate the return values. The goal is that we are going to cheat the malware that we are running on a physical machine instead of a virtualized machine. For example, the system integrated, system integrated protection status, process names, virtual device information such as the display resolution, virtual device information like uh, the number of, of uh, processor cores, the model name of the device. We also patch all of that. And we do patch the configuration of the monitor machine to mitigate the technique, uh, for instance, uh, to patch the CPU ID or the virtual MAC address footprint. And during the analysis, the sandbox implements libraries for taking screenshot of the desktop. And these screenshots are very helpful for analysts to, uh, to review automated analysis and recognize some cases that need human interaction. For example, like you need a mouse click to confirm installation or you need to type password for super user privilege. And on the left side of the screen, this is the authorization solver which automatically type the super user password when needed and is used a quas library to detect login window and then answer password using a keyboard event in the right side of the screen, this is also used the Quas library to take the screenshot. And then we search for needle in the haystack for buttons we need, for example, the OK, continue, next, or done button, and so on. And then the software performs a mouse click by using the Quas mouse event. And now that we have seen how the Mark AIMAR works, I'd like to show you how to hunt real malware in the white. So by testing our framework, we found Muktasek, which was an example of how we found malware by using our framework in the white. Some of the samples were first discovered by Malware Bias and Patrick Wardo from Objective-C in the last August. And by testing on the framework, we discovered more than 100 of sign of malicious binary in the white belongs to the whole AdWare campaign and we constructed a powerful signature that combining static, dynamic, and network information to detect malware. And by noticing the suspicious behavior such as the malware trying to, de to do evasion technique by detecting the network driver MAC address to see like, whether or not you're running on a physical machine or a virtualized machine. Also, we noticed a uh, signature that they plant a persistent indicator, namely mugdesec.plist. We also construct a set of network suspicious domain, and we construct a static analysis that we see the developer code signers, mostly of the, the campaign using a Vietnamese code signer name. And the interesting fact is that the whole campaign stay undetected for at least three months before Apple revoke those certificates and silently release an update URL rule for their X-Protect. And on a, large scale, on a large scale, we have processed more than 2,000 malicious samples, and we found that 85% of the collected samples are hardware, which dominated by OSX Pirate and OSX Mark Keeper. And their purpose is to make advertising a revenue for attacker by installing potential unwanted application or potential harmful application or redirect the victims to unwanted website. And in my opinion, they are widespread because technically they are not virus, but it can potentially perform malicious activity later on. And after analyzing the sample set, the results retrieved from Markamal were later post-processed through a classifier based on hybrid rules. And so far, we observe a total of 86 different Mark malware families until 2017. And we found that half of them belong to Backdoor and Trojan. And by picking out Marcos malware family, we uh, sel have selected two sets of malware in 2016 and 2017. And here are the heat maps where the reddish color is larger values and the smaller values are displayed by lighter color. And two heat maps has been constructed with featuring behavior on the horizontal axis 
and the malware variant names on vertical axis. And we see that Mapco's malware in 2017 demonstrate a drastic improvement by using anti-analytics techniques, including anti-debug, hibernation, discover hardware specification, or discover security tools running on the victim machine. Previous research in the field claimed that mark malware can be detected by using bash shell commands detection or persistent attempt detection. But however, we found that some variants never exhibit any persistent attempt or shell commands such as Ocean Lotus, H Agent, or K Ranger. And H Agent and Complex are known for participating in APT28, targeting individuals in the aerospace industry. So that uh, uh, for in conclusion, we think that it is possible to automatically monitor and an analyze network traffic, malware evasion techniques, persistent methods, fire operation from samples in a virtualized MAC environment. And we succeeded in clarifying malware var variants and its evolution on MACOS and we found an undiscovered Mac Adware campaign, including legitimate Apple developer certificates. We found other undetected backdoor belong to APT32 Ocean Lotus, targeting Vietnamese and Chinese organization. And the framework is up on GitHub. I hope one of you in here could uh, take and look at my code and do something even better than this. And if you're interested in improving this work, I think there would be a lot of things to improve in here, and I definitely don't think that my solution is the best solution for Mac malware hunting, but I think like at the moment it's possible that our solution is outperforming existing open solution at the moment. And for future work, it would be interesting to see Mac AML combined with machine learning or uh, bare metal analysis and uh, API cons monitor. So, um, thanks. It's time for Q&A. So, I think uh, that's it. Thanks for joining me.